Welcome to Wake Up With God. We live stream daily Mass today. We attend the Holy Mass on Saturday, 13th April 2024, Saturday of the second week of Eastertide. Christ, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. Please keep quiet and concentrate on attending the Mass. You have redeemed us, Lord, by your blood from every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us into a kingdom, priest for our God. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Thanks for bearing with me. I've had a pretty big morning. Um, there's continued pray for the little children over um, next door in the parish centre. They're having a whole day of fun and activities, learning about Jesus, and I'm helping to facilitate that and set up this morning as well. We have a high schoolers youth group, we have young adults often, but we try and do something at least twice a year for the primary schoolers. So this is called Encounter Kids, and today is their fun day. Today's Mass will be offered um, for someone very dear. It's with a heavy heart and uh, sadness that um, I announced that uh, Father Marty Larson has passed away. Um, and so I offer this Mass for him, for the repose of his soul and for his family. Father Marty um, passed away unexpectedly on Sunday evening um, due to an unexpected uh, brain trauma, due to a suspected brain trauma, sorry. A bit about Father Marty, he was ordained 10 years ago in 2014. He was um, here as a deacon under the guidance of uh, Father Kevin Smith in 2013, the year before. 
And he was Associate Pastor of Marichidor, uh, Jubilee Parish in the city, and also Harvey Bay before being appointed parish priest of Runaway Bay in the Gold Coast. He was a teacher um, at Brisbane Catholic Education, one of the schools there, um, for some time before he entered into the seminary. And Father Marty was very young, 49 years young, and was such a down-to-earth person. He had a very jovial personality. He loved sharing stories, and um, something that I probably couldn't pull off is he always um, had these coloured Converse shoes that were iconic of him and his personality. The details of his funeral will be announced in the coming days. Let's call to mind our sins and our shortcomings, asking for God's unlimited mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, hope and light of the serene and the sincere, we humbly entreat you to dispose our hearts to offer you worthy prayer and to ever extol you by dutiful proclamation of your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. One member of the Sanhedrin, a Pharisee called Gamaliel, who was a doctor of the law and respected by the whole people, stood up and asked to have the apostles taken out for a time. Then he addressed the Sanhedrin, Men of Israel, be careful how you deal with these people. There was Theodos, who became notorious not so long ago. He claimed to be someone important, and he even collected about 400 followers. But when he was killed, all his followers scattered, and that was the end of them. And then there was Judas the Galilean, at the time of the census, who attracted crowds of supporters, but he got killed too and all his followers followers dispersed. What I suggest, therefore, is that you leave these men alone and let them go. If this enterprise, this movement of theirs, is of human origin, it will break up of its own accord. But if it does, in fact, come from God, you will not only be unable to destroy them, but you might find yourself fighting against God. His advice was accepted and they had the apostles called in, gave orders for them to be flogged, warned them not to speak in the name of Jesus and released them. And so they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, glad to have had the honour of suffering humiliation for the sake of the name. They preached every day, both in the temple and in private houses, and their proclamation of the good news of Christ Jesus was never interrupted. This is the word of the Lord. The response 
One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Before whom shall I shrink? One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. There is one thing I ask of the Lord for this I long, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to savour the sweetness of the Lord, to behold his temple. One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in him, hold firm and take heart. Hope in the Lord. One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. No one lives on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went off to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, or of Tiberias, and a large crowd followed him, impressed by the signs he gave by curing the sick. Jesus climbed the hillside and sat down there with his disciples. It was shortly before the feast of the Passover. Looking up, Jesus saw the crowds approaching and said to Philip, Where can we buy some bread for these people to eat? He only said this to test Philip. He knew he himself knew exactly what he was going to do. Philip answered, 200 denarii would only buy enough to give them a small piece each. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said, There is a small boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what is that between so many? Jesus said to them, Make the people sit down. There were plenty there was plenty of grass there, and as many as five thousand men sat down. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and gave them out to all who were sitting already. He then did the same with the fish, giving out as much as they wanted. When they had eaten enough, he said to the disciples, Pick up the pieces left over so that nothing gets wasted. So they picked them up and filled 12 hampers with the scraps left over from the meal of five barley loaves. The people seeing this sign that he had given said, this really is the prophet who is come into the world. Jesus, who could see that they were about to come and take him by force and make him king, escaped back to the hills by himself. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise in this coming Sunday's Gospel, we hear that Jesus enters into the room that the disciples are in. He shows them his wounds, but then he opens their minds to the Scriptures and then reveals to them how he is uh, the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Interestingly, today's gospel is one such illustration of how Jesus does this, how he fulfills the prophecies and the law. And those who would have known the, uh, you know, the Jewish scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures of the time, the Jews, would have seen these parallels immediately after uh, the feeding of the 5,000. They would have joined the dots and would have thought, oh man, Jesus is really fulfilling the prophecies and fulfilling the law. So I want to explain this a little bit more. Firstly, the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes is the only miracle found in all four Gospels. Um, The only miracle is one of the very few miracles found in all four Gospels. The other one is the resurrection. Um, So if it's found in all four, it must have, firstly, must have really happened. And secondly, it must be really important. And it is. Well, why? Because Jesus went up a mountain, and so did Moses. Moses went up Mount Sinai. Just as Jesus gave his people 
Uh, Just as Moses gave his people manna and quails in the desert, so too Jesus gave his people bread and fish. Jesus is the fulfillment of the law of Moses and thus becomes the new Moses. Jesus is the new law. The prophet Elisha in the second book of Kings, he feeds his hundred men with ten loaves. Jesus does this on an even larger level. He feeds 5,000 men with only five loaves. So thus Jesus would have been seen as a prophet, but moreover a fulfillment of the prophets and the prophecies about him. So if Jesus is who he says he is and if he fulfills the laws and the prophets, then that means that we can trust him. We can trust Jesus. Isn't that the motto of the divine mercy image that we celebrated last Sunday as well? Divine Mercy Sunday. Jesus, I trust in you. So how do we trust in Jesus? Well, we surrender everything to him. When we don't fully understand, when the going gets tough, when we're going through our trials, when we've got lots of crosses to bear, we can surrender it to him. Not just 80% or not just the parts of our lives that are perfect and that we've got all under control and in order, but give him the 5% that we're hiding away, give him the parts that we're not proud of, the things that are cobwebby, the things that we do need cleansing and, and cleaning. Just like the boy who gave all that he had, he gave his lunch, five loaves and two fish. He was temporarily deprived and he would have been confused. He would have been unsure of what was to happen. Just as we can be confused and unsure when we surrender everything to Jesus. But then what happened after? The boy got his food back and everyone else was fed as well, even with 12 baskets left over. Why 12? Because it represents the 12 tribes of Israel, meaning the whole world, the whole world being fed by Jesus, being nourished by the word of God. So when we surrender to God, we are not only transformed, but others are also transformed as a byproduct of our actions. So by our surrender, other people are transformed and we're transformed. So trust in God, surrender it all to him. But first, we have to give something to God to work with. We can't just say, no, God, you do everything. We have to give him something to work with. And so we ask ourselves, what are the five loaves and the two fish that we can surrender, that we can give to God today. Amen. I invite you now to please stand. We're going to pray some prayers of the faithful. These prayers are for the world and for the church. That the ministers of the church might feed without fail the people of God in the table of the word and in the table of the Lord's body, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That government and civil agencies may attend to the people's need for food, shelter and security. Amen. Like the boy who offers five barley loaves and two fish, May we be generous with our little resources, which the Lord will multiply to answer the needs of many, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May we thank the Lord for the gift of food that restores our strength, for those who work to produce what we eat, and for those who prepare it at the table. Amen. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Father, open our eyes that we may see the deepest needs of men, women and children. Teach us the generosity that welcomes the hungry, the thirsty, the strangers and those who suffer in any way. Amen. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers spoken out loud and hear the prayers spoken in the silence of our hearts, especially the repose of the soul of Father Marty and for the children's ministry happening today and anything else that's on our hearts. And we ask that you grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Please speak us prayer. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The sacrifice of your praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. We're going to use the preface prayer for the dead on behalf of Father Marty Larson. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, in him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, 
He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread all throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Mark, our Archbishop, Tim, his auxiliary bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Martin Larson, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on this, the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other that sign of peace. Peace, everyone. Lamb of God, sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Christ our Lord was handed over for our transgressions and was raised again for our justification. Alleluia. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. I invite forward those giving communion to the sick and the housebound, please. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for these, our extraordinary ministers of communion, who bring uh, your blessed sacrament from this Eucharistic table to the next. Bless them on their travels, and may they share with those that are unable to join with us also the joy of the gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So continue to keep Father Marty and his family in your prayers. Continue to pray for this Children's Encounter Kids Day. And I see some kids here, so if you're wanting to come along, you're most welcome to come and participate as well uh, in this Encounter Kids Day. I think that's all the notices I have. So the Lord be with you. And with your spirit.
Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.
Cảm ơn các bạn đã xem video. Nếu thấy hay, hãy nhấn like, đăng ký kênh và comment để ủng hộ chúng mình nhé.